Well, what a day it was in the stock market yesterday. For me personally, yesterday was the most money I have ever made in the stock market. Obviously from a paper gains point of view, but yeah, it was quite an achievement for me personally, because like I said, I've never actually made that much money before. Yesterday I looked at my portfolio and I could not believe how much it was up yesterday. And obviously a few of you guys were on the comment section of yesterday's video going, Jacob, why don't you talk about stock market? It's absolutely rallying. Why are you not talking about hims and hers? Well, unfortunately for me, I did not expect the rally to happen yesterday. So I recorded the video on Sunday night because on Monday I had a full day of work because obviously some of us YouTubers aren't grifters. We have full-time jobs. So I had a full day's work and then I had a football match in the evening. So I thought, pre-record the video and then that's the video done for Monday and it just didn't work out because then we had the explosion in the stock market and if I knew, if I had the time and if I knew what was going to happen I would have done a talk about what happened on Monday but obviously we're doing it on Tuesday now so what I'll do today is I kind of reflect on the rally in the stock market from Monday and then I'll talk about where we're at and where is the stock market. Are we in a bit of a bubble market? Is it getting a little bit frothy out there? I'll talk about all those things as well. So um, yeah, hit the like button, let's get started. So yeah, what a day it was in the market yesterday. Like I said, for me, it was the best ever day I've ever had in the stock market, which is absolutely amazing for me, personal achievement for me that happened yesterday. Uh, before we do, just to let you know, if you are on the Patreon, I did drop some exclusive videos over the weekend. Uh, so the videos were a review on Blocks earnings, uh, I did a review on S4 Capital and Mobico's earnings, and I also did an earnings review on DraftKings earnings. So if you want to see exclusive content on Patreon, guys, links in the description, £5 a month. But first of all, I want to dedicate this video. <laughs> I want to dedicate this video to any of the guys that stuck through the stock market in 2022, maybe even stuck with the YouTube channel in 2022. Um, all of you guys that went through that bear market in 2022, you know, the worst stock market that we've ever had since um, 2008. It was a horrible market that time. And any of you guys that stuck through that, yesterday was a day for you guys because it, any of you guys that went through that pain and you know that day after day where the stocks just kept going down and down and down, you know, you're buying hymns and hairs and it was a six dollars then five dollars then three dollars then three and you're like can this get any worse now all that pain you went through for that full year hopefully you're getting the results today hopefully you're getting the gains today so obviously for you guys you know you, you really deserve it obviously any of you guys that started investing in 2023 you're like hey well what, what's this all about pain all i've seen since that time frame is rallying up in the stock market so you're a little bit more lucky but any of you guys that stuck through that time frame i remember having to come on the youtube channel in 2022 every day for like a full year and i was like it's gonna be okay <laughs> and in my head i was thinking this is painful um but you know we made it through and you know we're getting the results now and you know look at some of the stocks you know hams and hairs what a day yesterday 19 percent up Pfft, what a day i mean I remember making videos about this stock and you know nobody wanted to own it. Nobody on YouTube was covering this stock. I was making videos on this stock and every single comment was negative. I would have 40, 50 comments negatively negatively posted on this stock when I was talking about it, like, oh, it's a trash stock, you're a scammer. And obviously now, you know, it's absolutely flying. You know, I remember, you know, the, the great poster that I made, which to this day is, you know, I, I always keep it. I, I've got a copy in my office and I always look at that. Um, it, from a point of view is that, you know, when everybody's fearful, you know, that's is that the time to be, have that opportunity? And it's also a point of view where I look at it and I go, uh, it's motivation, it's motivation because I looked at hims and hers and I could see everything going well and I thought it's a matter of time before this starts performing on the share price. And it, it's a bit of a motivation poster for me when I look at the poster that I have of, you know, hims and hers is uninvestable. Uh, what was it, May 2022, Andy Pickering when it's $3 and it's motivation because I think, you know, that sometimes the best opportunity is coming when all that fear is and just as well as that proving people wrong because I knew it was going to work out so well, that's why I made it my second large position and obviously now, you know, it's uh, it's gonna play pay for a nice Lamborghini on the driveway, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, what a stock! Uh, up a hundred and eighty nine percent year to date. Since this stock was a three dollar stock. Wow, um, if you called Andy Pickering, you've been spending a lot of time at the pub recently because you just missed out on a massive return. In fact, I think when that comment was posted, it was $3.11, so yeah, it's nearly a, a 10 bagger now, so yeah, absolutely devastated for you, but hey, it is what it is. The uh, Can't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Meta, yeah, and once again, another really good performer, up 68% year to date. DraftKings. Uh, DraftKings have been on a little bit of a rally. A uh, bit of a surprise because I didn't think the earnings were mega strong. Um, but yeah, the stock is up 
28% year to date, which is about fair, I think, for DraftKings. PayPal um, up 41% year to date. I remember a lot of people saying this was a dead company uh, not too long ago when the stock was in that kind of $50 range. Um, we're only a couple of months ago now and uh, obviously rallied up massively since that time frame. Google, a pretty decent year from Google, up 30% as well. Melee, even after the drop of earnings, which I don't think it should have dropped off earnings because the earnings were actually pretty good. Uh, another one of my stocks up 28%. Uh, they're all my stocks as well, by the way. Uh, SoFi up 46% year to date. A little bit of deceiving on here because uh, the reason why is because it entered the year at $9 and then very quickly it dropped to $8. So if you kind of take that out of way you know it's up a lot more i i know i was on the youtube channel for a while saying like i think anything in the six to seven dollar range for this stock is a, a, a good buy so if you were buying that six seven dollar range obviously you know for you guys you're up a lot more than 46 percent year today you know you're up over 100 percent today this was the newest member into the 100 percent return club for me and um, obviously the list just keeps getting longer and longer and it's great to add another 100 percent return member into the club i was actually thinking of doing a sofi video and uh, maybe that's tomorrow to just celebrate another 100 percent return member into the club um, you know, uh, absolutely amazing achievement once again. Uh, and the S&P 600, uh, what a run this has been on. Uh, the only index that I own, I think the small caps are very good values. Oh, well, I did think they were very good values as you guys saw as I've been posting videos about it. Um, and what a rally this has been up, uh, you know, up nearly 10% in the last kind of five days. And I guess that's a good thing. That's a good thing with the market rally at the moment is that the rallies coming from the S&P 600, the small caps are rallying. You know, a lot of the stocks that I just showed you there, today when we look at like, like the likes of Meta, Meta was down today. You know, you look at the likes of Google. I don't think Google had a good day. Yeah, I mean, it was up 1%. But it's when you look at the small caps today, you look at the small caps and, you know, Hims and Hers is up 19%. You know, you look at the likes of DraftKings, uh, up 7%. You look at the likes of um, SoFi, another small cap, uh, you know, up 8%. The rally right now is coming from the small caps, which is really healthy for the market because the small caps have kind of been in the dumps for like the last two years. It's good to see the small caps rallying. And and what's actually quite healthy about this market at the moment is you look at the big tech and the big tech isn't rallying at the moment. So that's really good rotation that's going on in the market. That's actually really healthy to see those small caps lifting. The big issue that we've had in the market for a while is like a lot of AI and big tech have been covering the cracks in the market because they've been performing really well. Now we're seeing a lot of the small caps rally, which is actually quite healthy for the market at the moment because they were actually the attractive values. Obviously the big rally at the moment is coming off really the Trump rally. And uh, the fact that Trump's coming in, people are getting optimistic about where the economy is gonna go. The big thing is the cuts. You know, the people are thinking that, you know, we've covered this before multiple times on the YouTube channel and saying like, you know, people are thinking Donald Trump's gonna come in and put pressure on Jerome Powell to start cutting those interest rates. That's what people are hoping for. And, and that's why the small caps are rallying because what are the most interest sensitive companies out there is the small caps. And that's why we're seeing the S&P 600 rally up more than the S&P 500. That's, that's the prime example of that's what people are hoping on right now is that people are hoping Trump comes in, cuts the, cuts the interest rates and small caps rally. And that's where the optimism is optimism coming from now, which is actually probably not like a bubbling market at the moment and that's the kind of positives the negatives of this is that from a from an s p 500 point of view the big tech point of view they're very rich and valued you know this is one of the highest p ratios that we've had from the market at the moment from from that kind of the the big stocks out there so at the moment the small caps are actually rallying because they've been undervalued for so long you know quite often i see people say like oh it's rallying up so we must be in a bu bubble well it's not in a bubble if you've been at historic low valuations for the last two years and now you're starting to see the financial start reflecting the valuations that's not a bubble guys that's just that the market's been undervalued for a while and people are finally starting to take them opportunities the s p 500 would be the, the different case here for my opinion because i do believe that's a little bit more richly valued so We'll, we'll keep an eye on that one at the moment. The other signs that I have concerns of at the moment is the um, is when I look at is there any more bad signs in the market right now? Are we entering the bubble? Is, is this rally deserved or are we into a bubble? And I'm part of a trading to one two forum on Facebook, and I, I I said this on the Discord actually, and I said you know when we do start having the signs of people saying oh I'm new to stocks and I'm up this much and I bought some Tesla and then I'm going to buy some more Tesla, should I carry on buying Tesla? 
that's when it gets a little bit worrying of like, okay, maybe we're getting a little bit bull bubblish where we're getting all these new, you know, it's a bit like 2021. You know, any of you guys that went through 2021 and then all them new investors came in and just kept buying and buying more. And eventually when you reach the top, it's a, it's a big fall back into reality where we should be. And, you know, you start seeing these stocks that have been very hot stocks and people keep buying them and they keep rallying up. Uh, you know, the, all these new investors coming in, you know, it's the, it's the cocktail party of Peter Lynch. If you've never read the cocktail party story of Peter Lynch, go read it. It's a bit like that, you know, when everyone's getting into stocks, is that a little bit sign of a bubble in market? So that's kind of a little bit of a negative that's kind of going on in the background. Uh, you know, I saw another photo like this and I've seen people like uh, are in Tesla stock and, you know, they've got nearly 90% of the portfolio, 99,000 out of 109,000 portfolio, um, you know, in, in Tesla stock. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not having to go against someone just because they're invested in Tesla. All I'm saying is when you've got 90% of a position in one stock, that is very risky. It's kind of on the verge of gambling. Um, especially when you've only recently got in because of the recent rally off the off the Trump rally, you know, that's that's the sign when I start seeing these investors here start doing these sort of things. It reminds me of 2021 where it's a little bit more bubblish. And I start seeing people chasing these stocks, you know. Palantir, I think Palantir is a good company. I, I don't think it should be the value that it is. And when I see people just buying and buying and buying and start chasing the stock, you know, people keep buying and buying and thinking, oh, look at this, you know, the cocktail party from Peter Lynch. And um, eventually the, these bubbles get a little bit... Um, worrying and and i'm a little bit mixed on where i am with the market at the moment because it is great enjoying it but i always try to think about you know when everyone's bullish i you know i'm a little bit more fearful when everyone's fearful i try to be a little bit more bullish and i'm trying to look at the market at the moment and I'm a little bit mixed on the market at the moment because I look at some of the big tech and I see people chasing the big tech in the S&P 500. I look at the valuations and they go, yeah, we're a little bit frothy. We're a little bit bubbly. You know, people, they're chasing, you know, Palantir. It's a little bit frothy out there. But then I'm looking at the market and I'm looking at like the small caps and I go, I can justify the small cap rally. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not going to call it because it's gone up, it's a bubble because I look at some of the S&P 600 valuations and I go, Actually, I can see why that's up. That wasn't actually a bad valuation. And and it kind of goes back, to, I've got two examples here. So the first one is Hims. So this is a stock that I've owned uh, for a while. And this was the last time I did numbers for you guys. And it was a three billion market cap company. It's now a six billion market cap company. But when I look at Hims and Hairs, when I did these numbers last time, I was showing you guys like, you know, it's been on a good run, but I'm looking at some of these prices here and I'm on the low side, I'm still getting 100% upside. On the mid side, I'm still getting 406% upside. On the high side, I'm still getting nearly 800% upside. Like, for me, it was still good value. So I was saying to you guys that even though it's rallied, I actually think Hims and Hairs will do very well for the next few years. Now, obviously, from these levels, Hims and Hairs is nearly 2x now. And if we do update it now, which I think it's like a 6 billion market cap valuation, if I'm slightly wrong, I apologize, but stay with me because you'll get my point here. Um, but when I update to a 6 billion market cap and it's double from when I last did the numbers, you look at the numbers here, and I'm still getting like good upside from Hims and Hairs. So even though it's still been on a good rally, I think for a company like Hims and Hairs, it's rallying because it was undervalued. I think some of these small caps were just way undervalued, um, like your Hims and Hairs, like your SoFi's. They eventually now, money's coming in because they've finally seen the opportunity and maybe the catalyst was these potential interest rate cuts and people are piling in. And for me, I won't worry too much about this because I'm looking at the numbers, I'm running the numbers here and I'm thinking, it's actually not too bad valuation. I'd be happy to carry on holding the shares here. I might take a little bit of prof profit off the table just because it's gone up so rapidly, but I'm not gonna change my investing philosophy around hims and hers for the next five years because I still think there's plenty of upside there. The The other example would be something like Palantir. I, you know, I look at the people that are chasing Palantir at the moment and they're chasing it at 304 times earnings. And, I'm, I'd, and you know, it's now a 137 billion market cap. I actually looked a second ago and it's actually now a bigger market cap than Disney, which is crazy. You know, you go down the street, ask how many people know what Palantir is and what they're doing, how many times they've used it. And then you go ask someone down the street if they've used Disney and if they know what it is. And then go ask them if they know what Mickey Mouse is. That's when it's getting a little bit worried. And I was like looking at the numbers on um, Palantir, for example. And I was just running the numbers, 137 billion market cap, 15, 20, 20%, 25% revenue growth, profit margin of 20, 25, 30% profit margins. Uh, I've got 20 times earnings in. Obviously, it's going to probably trade a little bit more than that. Let me up it to 60 times earnings. And by the way, this is five years out numbers, by the way, guys. So if I go five years out on these growth numbers and 20% profit margin, there's literally no upside on Palantir, which if you're a Palantir shareholder, you're like, okay, that's a little bit frothy. When you're running five-year five year numbers in the future, and some of these numbers are quite big 
numbers, you know, 25% revenue growth, you know, they're not even doing 30% profit margin right now, and you're not even getting, getting any upside, guys, trust me, that's when you're like, okay, that's a little bit concerning. I mean, let's say even bang it up to 120 times earnings. I mean, 120 times earnings, I don't think I've ever entered that before on YouTube. So if we put 120 times earnings in, <laughs> that's when you actually start seeing a little bit of upside. So you believe in the next five years, Palantir can grow like 20, 25% and it does 25, 30% profit margins and trades at 120 times earnings. Then you finally get some upside here and, and that's where, it, when the market looks a bit, little bit frothy, that, that's when the market looks frothy. When you look at some of these stocks and, you know, this is not me having a dig at Palantir, but I'm just saying like, it's a good company, but you know, when people just keep buying it and you having all these new people that are chasing these stocks and you, you start running the actual numbers and you go, in five years time to make any money on this and you look at the numbers they have to do, I mean, they have to execute to perfection and they've got to have a really lofty valuation put on them. And the risk to reward for me is just definitely not there. And if I was in something like Palantir, I'd be going, now I'm a little bit concerned because the numbers they have to do to justify me holding this in the next five years is absolutely insane. But if I'm looking at something like Hims, I'd be so much more confident holding a stock like Hims because as I look at Hims, I'd be like, you know what? Even with the rally that's been on, I'm still getting plenty of upside. So in this market at the moment, I think it just comes down to like you as an investor and you just got to be a little bit cautious and you just got to look at how much things are rallying up. I think you just got to look at the numbers and go, right, it's been on a really good rally. Is there still upside here? Um, but I think from a stock picker's market, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot harder to value to find value, certainly. Um, but for me, it's one of those markets now where I, I just kind of sit back and for me, like, I don't need to chase it. You know, there's a lot of people having to chase this market now because maybe they flip-flopped, maybe they didn't buy the stocks, maybe they thought that it was going to be a horrible year, stocks are going to crash. I don't really need to chase the market. I'm, I've got most of my wealth invested and you know what, I might take a little bit of profit off the table. I certainly might take a little bit more profit off the table where I'm getting some stocks that are you know, not, maybe not great value here, but I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm just happy to hold it because I've got all the results now. I've got all the benefits from buying in that awful stock crash. So. Yeah, overall with the market, like I'm happy, you know, really good money being made, best ma probably best day, of, it is the best day I've ever had in the stock market, but that's where I'm at with it, like, are we in a bit of a bubble now? Um, and, and the answer to that is that I'm not sure. I certainly think that some things are deserving to be up. You know, I wouldn't call something that's up a bubble just because it's up. I think some things have deserved to be up, especially the small caps, but I'd certainly be concerned around some of the big caps and I'd definitely had a little, a little bit of, you know, I'd be definitely a bit cautious and definitely there's a lot of people out there, I think, chasing some of these stocks and I don't think they have, either they don't know how to run numbers or they, um, they're they ignoring the numbers or they're not looking at the numbers. And I think some of those people could get burned a little bit now because they've had so, some of these companies are having so much share price and the financial numbers pull forward that I don't think there's many gains left in the future. And that's certainly the thing to be careful on anyway. So um, yeah, really good day out there, really happy. And that's where my uh, my thought process is right now after this rally at the moment. And um, like I said, I might do a video on SoFi um, the next day, um, talking about the newest 100% return member into the portfolio. Hope you enjoyed it guys. Hope you had a great day out there in the stock market making money yesterday. And uh, I'll see you in a bit.